that's a question in the audience so that someone asks me about it. <laughs> uh, I suspect someone probably will. Who else? Yes. Um, in uh, in Ontario, the jurisdiction of the in the Same in Alberta. Same. Okay. So uh, uh, in uh, November, the Canada Policy Foundation came out with a report that said on a national perspective, uh, that what we need to start to do is find ancillary investments to economic development so that we can sustain it. And I'm wondering how you bridge the divide between your city councillors and your school board trustees and a bid to present Calgary to the world. That's a beautiful question. No one has ever asked me that before, and I'm very happy uh, that you did. So, you know, in some cities in the United States, the city, actually usually the mayor, because they have executive authority, has taken over the school boards. That happened in New York, for example. Um, and I don't think we should do that. We have enough to do. Um, but I do think that provincial governments, who are ultimately responsible for education, and I'm going to speak mostly from the Alberta perspective, need to really figure out what the role of elected school board trustees is. In Alberta, they are toothless tigers. We vote for them, they don't set their own budgets, they don't decide on where schools are going, uh, and the province does whatever they want. Um, in fact, for, for a time, the province even negotiated the contracts with the teachers province-wide, so why do we have school board trustees? I actually do believe in trustees. I believe in localization of that kind of authority and power, but you actually need to give them the power to do their jobs. And in Calgary in particular, our school board has been plagued by a little bit of dysfunction, not like Toronto City Council, but uh, because they actually don't have any authority. Uh, and I think that's a big problem. Now from a city's perspective, I spend a lot of my time on issues around urban planning and design. And certainly we know that neighborhoods are only work if you've got a great school as the heart of the neighborhood. A great, I'm gonna put in a controversial word, a great public school as the heart of the neighborhood. Uh, oh, I can go on forever about the importance of public education to fulfilling that great Canadian life dream, and I often do. But if we don't, if we lack the ability to plan around those public schools, that's actually a big problem. So to give you a very simple example, I'm going to go way off on a tangent, but I will come back. My tangent is this. Right now, in the Western world, for the first time since the Industrial Revolution, kids who are born today have a lower life expectancy than their parents. It's shocking, isn't it? And that's entirely because of a lack of physical activity. What in the world am I talking about? What I'm talking about is one of the drivers of that lack of physical activity is that kids don't walk to school anymore. Because we've managed to build neighborhoods where the school is inaccessible by foot, or where the people live, there is no school, and so we have situations where parents are driving their kids to school when kids used to walk. And as a result, in most of our neighborhoods, we actually don't physically have room for the parents to drop their kids off. So we have huge issues with safety and jaywalking and all of this. And it sounds ridiculous, right, to tie all of these things together, but they all go together. And so one of the things I've been working with school boards in my city is at least smarter planning so that we can keep the schools within walking distance of as many homes as possible, that we can figure out ways to do uh, the traffic and the drop off of the school buses. One of my little ideas uh, that the school board is resisting, but I write so they'll fall for it eventually, is actually to have those drop off zones a few blocks away from the school and have uh, groups of kids walk together in what I call a walking school bus um, to the school so they at least get a little bit of physical activity in. These are the sorts of things that I think we can do with cooperation without changing the actual uh, legal authorities of the school board or the city council. But they're the kinds of things that matter. Similarly, cities spend a lot of money building recreational facilities, but often we've got gyms right in those schools that aren't used in the evenings. And we have all kinds of union and cost and God knows what else issues that are preventing people from playing pickup basketball in those school gyms at night. These are easy things to solve. Uh, they don't require constitutional change. Um, but these are the sorts of things that are solved, I think, with more cooperation. That said, I get tweets at least several a day from high school students asking me to do things at their school, and I always just reply with pay more attention to social studies. 
you're tweeting the wrong guy. Uh, and uh, you know, I think that there is a real world there. Does that help? Does that answer your question? Yes. Can I punctuate what you just said? Sure. In the city of Toronto, uh, Josh Maclow and Michael Thompson uh, were having a meeting with Mayor Bloomberg and Mayor Bloomberg last year, which created a city school board. Oh, okay. And for the first time in 15 years, at the same time, we had city councilors down to the trustees of the four boards. So what they will be able to do is precisely address the thing that you raised. How do we access the, how do we increase communities at schools? How do we make sure the kids in the schools get into the rec center? And how do we make sure people get breakfast when they get to it? Great. I'm thrilled to hear it. We're just starting on that road ourselves, starting with traffic of all things. But we'll get there. Anyone else?